All right, to begin looking in InDesign, I've set up a document and I've made several pages and I've placed some different photos and just wanted to kind of compare and contrast what those look like. So this is our large image and you can see our large image, 300 dpi. Scrolling down, here's my large image at 150 and at 72. And at 72, I actually made it a little bit smaller. It should be much bigger than that. And then notice the small image fits on one page. So this is that for that small image, that's how small we would have to run a 300 dpi photo. So that should start to give you some idea of how that image size translates in. So let's go ahead and view this and get started at looking at um, what these actually look like. And we're going to view at actual size. So here's our large image. And I want you to just kind of look along the edges. You can see we do have a little bit of artifact here. When that happens, and you know you're running a 300 dpi image, go up to View, Display Performance, and switch to high quality. And notice that just clean some of that up. So if you know you're at a good resolution and you're seeing a little fuzzy, sometimes just that display resolution will help. Now that can slow your processing down, especially if you have a lot of images. So use that as a way to check and then go back to um, a typical display. Same place, just switch to typical. We're going to leave it on high quality now since we're doing some compare contrast. So this photo looks really good. Now let's look at this links panel that I have up. Information you can get in your links panel. Here is my little thumbnail of my image. Here's the image name and here's the page it's on. This is additional information. If you don't see it, just toggle that arrow by one selected. And here I have actual PPI and effective PPI. Effective is the actual PPI on the page. So for example, if I decrease the size dimension of that photo, my resolution goes up. Again, in Photoshop we made these dependent on each other. Same thing happens if we make it larger. Now my effective PPI is 279. Now that's not a big deal. You can still see this photo looks good. If we print it out, it would look great. You have about 10% of a fudge area here. So once you went beyond that, and we'll look at another photo for that, um, you can start getting into a dangerous territory with that. You can also use this information to determine if you've stretched a photo. Now if you've done something like that, it might be a little obvious you've stretched your photo. Usually it's more subtle, but you can always tell in your effective PPI if you've stretched your photo. Effective PPI should always be one number, and if it isn't, you've stretched it. Now to unstretch your photo, you want to select the image, and I mean the inside of the image. Notice there's a brown selection. Go up to your percentages and just pick a number in between those two. So I'm just actually going to pick 100 and hit return. And now I just need to slide that image back into the frame. So you can use that Im information to kind of help you determine if you've stretched an image. Of course, if you've went too far, you can always just replace your image if you've stretched it. Let's go ahead and look at our 150. And again, we're viewing this at actual size. You can see we start to get a little haloing, a little artifact around the edges. This would still print well to the journalism school printers. Again, here's our actual and effective PPI. I can make that photo smaller. That makes my effective PPI larger. And let's look at our big photo. So here is our 72 DPI and you can really start to see some artifact coming in, um, losing some of that detail along pixel edges. And this photo is still um, smaller than we could run it. So if we actually ran this at the full 72, 
you can see, and I'm looking for my effective to be 72 as well as what I'm looking for. So that's the difference between a 72 at the same effective PPI and a 300 at the same PPI. So let's look at our small image. And obviously, without even going into many details, huge lesson here on the larger the file you start with, the better your results are going to be. Junk in, junk out. So the higher quality image, the higher the size, the better image you start with, the better your results are going to be. So doing things like taking a screenshot, taking a screenshot on your phone and using it, all of those can create small images and you're just going to have problems with those. So let's take a look at this 300 dpi photo. And if I run it, its size, so this is the maximum size it can be, it's pretty hard to even tell what that is. So if I come in and make it larger, look what starts to happen. Now my effective resolution is down to 60. That's not even good for screen viewing. And it's really small. And we are viewing this at actual size, but we've just got so much pixelization um, with that image. So even at 150, we have a better idea of what it is. Still hard to see. This might print out okay, might work decently as a PDF. But if we want to make that really be able to view, you can see pixelization, and we're down to 58. So this is the smallest resolution size, and you can see that same issue. If we make them larger, our resolution really is impacted. So your big takeaway here is start with a great high quality, high resolution image. Secondly, understand should this image be 72, 150, or 300 pixels per inch. And then check how you're displaying it. Check your effective PPI when you bring it into InDesign. The final step that I want to show you is looking at PDFs, and we'll do that in our next video.